What's going on? It's Wednesday. Hello, my name's Mel. Welcome to my world. And for those of you that are new to my channel, it's all about self-built camper vans and camper van related stuff. And occasionally I go treasure hunting with my metal detector. So if that's something that interests you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. Now today's Wednesday, so this is Waffle on a Wednesday, where I answer your questions to the best of my ability. And I'd like to start off by saying thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy. Now before I do get stuck into answering some of your questions, I'd just like to start off by saying a big heartfelt thank you to everyone that took the time to leave comments in my last video. Some of those comments really did choke me up and I really do appreciate it. It's just so nice of you, so thank you. I have had a quick read through those comments. I haven't yet responded to any of them, but I will do as soon as I've finished recording this video. Now I'd also like to say a massive congratulations to Becky. She is absolutely pumped. She recently got one of her videos featured on Chrome's channel van city van life and she really is excited and overjoyed to see herself on chrome's channel and if you'd like to see that video i'll put a link to it up here go check it out and give rebecca a thumbs up on chrome's channel i'm sure she would really appreciate it well done becky um yeah i feel your joy i really do right okay let's get on with this week's waffle on a wednesday so the first comment stroke question comes from John. Cheers Mel, you deserve all what you have and more. When are you going to do metal detectorizing again? <laughs> metal detectorizing. I'm sure that's not a real word, but I like it anyway. I've had some great finds lately. Cheers. John left that comment on my last video that I uploaded. So thank you, John. I really appreciate that. And I will be going metal detecting very soon, as soon as this storm blows over. Because as you know, the beaches get all stirred up and sand gets moved about. And hopefully some treasure will be exposed. And I'm going to go down to, and I'm thinking about going down to, I should say, Western Supermare because that is a really old beach visited by people way back in the Victorian times so a little bit of luck I might find some old stuff down there It'd be really exciting but I've got to wait till the weather calms down obviously but yeah metal detecting videos are coming very soon I may spend a couple of days down there <laughs> I've never been to Western Supermare so uh, let me know what you think is Western Superman a good place for metal detecting? Have any of you tried it? Let me know. Comments in the section below. Now my next question comes from Grand P and it brings up a really big safety concern of mine. Something that really does concern me and I see a lot of people doing in their camper vans. So I'm going to read this out and then I'll explain why. Mel, I'm in the process of building out a van and following your principle of building in a way that I can move and alter things as I'm as time goes by. I'm on a tight budget and I'm looking at different cooking appliances. Why is it some are so cheap and others are so expensive? What would you recommend for someone on a tight budget? Thanks for all the information and the videos. I wouldn't have had the confidence to build my own camper if it wasn't for your channel. Well, thank you, Grand P. That's a really kind thing for you to say, and it's a really good question. And the reason some cooking appliances are really cheap and others are are more expensive is because of a safety feature they either have or they lack and the cheap ones do lack this safety feature I shall demonstrate using this stove that I've just got out of the cupboard so this is my emergency backup stove well not emergency it's in case I run out of gas <laughs> and a lot of people use these types of stoves in their camper van which is all well and good as long as they understand one particular thing about these and this is a real big safety concern because a lot of people use camping stoves in their vans. They fit them permanently. I'm as guilty as the next man. I did it on my first van when I was um, on a really tight budget. And I think Rebecca's got one in her van as well. But although hers is a more upmarket one, it has actually got a flame failure safety cutout on it. Unlike these. So what happens is, right, so these have these cheap disposable cylinders you lock it into place turn the knob yeah and you can hear the gas coming out and the gas will continue coming out until you light it oh there you go you light it 
it's now lit it's not a problem <laughs> but if that flame blows out the gas continues to come out and it won't take long and let's just turn it off for the gas to fill up inside your van potentially causing your van to explode into a million pieces oh, there you go turn it off so that's why I don't recommend using a camping stove, the cheap camping stoves in your van. Always make sure you get a stove with flame failure cutout. Allow me to demonstrate. I've, I'll show you on my stove what I mean. I'll just bring the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. And the stove I've got in my van, I think it was £120, which isn't bad. It's quite, you know, obviously it's dearer than a cheap camping stove. You can get these camping stove twin burner ones with a grill in the middle you can pick those up for about 40 quid but for the extra 80 quid you could get yourself a proper stove let me bring you down and I'll show you what I mean okay so this is my hob in my van and what sets this apart from the camping stoves or most camping stoves is this extra little device on here and this is the flame failure cutout device if I take this off you can see the difference so a camping stove will more than likely have an electronic igniter which clicks when you push the button down, but they don't have these flame failure cutouts. And I'll demonstrate how it works. I'll just put this back together. I'm hoping my microphone can pick this up. So if I turn this knob now, no gas is coming out. There's nothing coming out of there because it's not lit. If I push it and light it, gas comes out and it stays coming out until I blow it out. Now I've blown it out, gas is still coming out but as soon as this cools down the gas will cut out In a minute. there you go you hear it click that's the flame failure safety cut out that's why you should always have one of these stoves in a confined space in your camper van try to avoid using camping stoves because they are designed to be used outside that's why they're a lot cheaper because they don't have the flame failure cutout device fitted to them. These are really cheap. They're about 120 quid. I know it's a little bit dearer than the 30 quid stoves, but potentially this could save your life because if your gas or if you even knock one of these butt knobs, see this is on still. This is off. This is on. No gas is coming out because it's not lit. If you were to leave that like that by mistake on a camping stove, it wouldn't take long for your gas stove to fill your van with gas, potentially yeah, blowing your van to pieces, basically. So avoid using a camping stove in your van. Always fit a stove that has a flame failure cutout device fitted to it. Thanks for the great question and good luck with your build. Remember, keep it simple keep it safe oh we have another question concerning health and safety i feel like i'm doing a public service video here <laughs> this comes from john parish hi mel do you flush out your water tank and piping periodically speaking as a retired legionnaire inspector just curious you're really growing now well done cold water should be below 20 degrees c and hot water at least 60 degrees c how nerdy, eh? Well, John Parrish, I don't actually flush out my fresh water tank. I put tablets in it to try and stop any nasty bugs growing. I do actually have a little bit of experience with Legionnaire's disease. Well, not the disease itself, but preventing it. And that was when I had an injection moulding company. I used to have a massive big cooling tower and that worked by water running down inside and a fan on top sucking air up and up through it. And they were like... I don't know, they were deadly, they were like um, a disaster waiting to happen and I used to put chlorine tablets in that every single day, these big massive chlorine tablets and when it was running that's all you could smell was chlorine and periodically I would flush that through as well with some other special chemicals. So yeah, I've, I've kind of dealt with that issue before, so I do have a slight understanding of where you're coming from with the Legionnaire's disease. But getting back to my water tank, it is only 60 litres. I do fill it up with fresh water quite often. Um, when I'm out and about on the road, it probably lasts me a week and a bit if I'm lucky. So the water in there does get changed quite often. For safety's sake, I do actually add some tablets. <laughs> And I'll put these aqua midi tablets in there 
um, two of these should do 50 litres so I put two in there um, very rarely do I let the tank run out so it's more than enough and every now and again I will actually put four of these in there and just let it sit and then use the water because I don't actually use that water for um, drinking or consumption I just use it purely for washing up doing the dishes keeping my van clean sometimes wash me beautiful face and my underarms and my sticky bits <laughs> So yeah, I don't mind a little bit of chlorine in the water when I'm doing that. Now for drinking water, I've got my vessel here that I fill up using 5 litre bottled waters from my supermarkets. I know you're not supposed to refill these with chlorinated water because the plastic does leach out into the chlorinated water. So for that reason, I only fill them up about four times and then I replace them with fresh ones. I don't yeah i don't like filling them up too often i do actually throw them away and buy new ones every now and again saying that this one's about two months old now so this has got to go in the bin soon <laughs> so there you go i hope that answers that question i do recommend these tablets you can um, cook with the water i have done occasionally uh, cooked like pasta and stuff with water out of my main tank and you, you, you really don't taste these unless you've got twice the amount in there than you should have I uh, wouldn't recommend that because then you can taste the chlorine but yeah your water tanks <laughs> like John says you can get some nasty bugs growing in there so yeah highly recommend flushing them out now and again right great question let's find something else a little bit light-hearted <laughs> so to lighten up the mood let's have troll of the week troll of the week and this week's Troll of the Week award goes to MJ Remy. <laughs> this is this is priceless, this really is. It's so ironic, I've got to read this out. Well, actually, I'm not going to read the whole thing out, because as you can see, it's a little bit of an essay. Right, which is ironic, as you will see. Mel, way too much talk and fussing around. Please talk less and get to the essentials on the table demo. No need for this much FaceTime on the camera either. The Lagun table is the topic. Stay on topic. It was frustrating to catch glimpses of the table then wait through long segments of joking around and FaceTime. Value our time. And that's all I'm going to read of that because I value your time. <laughs> and he goes on to say some other stuff that i'm not going to read out yeah but the ironic thing is right that's not the end of it he went on to leave another comment on another video that's really long and he says in that comment as well mel talk less show more time is valuable so basically mj remy is asking me to value his time but then ironically sends me a whole two paragraphs of text and expects me to read it well i'm not going to read it so there <laughs> right let's get back to some more serious questions the man asks hi mel great content well thank you very much would love to know what battery you have as the vehicle battery make model and cost please having trouble with my current one and need a recommendation for a robust and reliable replacement well, the man, I have a Lucas battery. It's been great. I've had it for two years. It's um, 95 amp hour. Not sure the cranking capacity. But I would say to you, the one thing you need to do really is go to a supplier like Alpha Batteries. Highly recommend them. Give them your registration number and they will then send you the best battery or the most suitable battery for your van. And they are extremely knowledgeable. I trust them 100%. I've got my leisure batteries from them. And if I needed to replace my main engine battery, I would most definitely use Alpha batteries again. So yeah, get in touch with Alpha batteries. They're the people you need to be asking that question, really. They are the experts after all. I hope that helps and good luck with your van. Thanks for the great question. Now, Pasty Trekker asks quite a complicated question, but with a simple answer. Mel, I'm wanting to add a 60 watt solar panel do i need to add a fuse between the solar panel and the ring charger and what size fuse would you suggest if so many thanks well pasty track had a simple answer to that question is that the fuse is there to protect your controller so 
have a look in the manual of your controller and there you will find the size of the fuse you need. You can buy special fuses that go between solar panels. They come encased in the MC4 connectors. They look like an MC4 connector, a double-ended one and a fuse is in the middle. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you, um, but they are readily available. And like I say, the fuse is there to protect the controller, not the solar panel. In the event of like say a lightning strike or something like that or a high power surge of some sort or should the solar panel get damaged and short out it will then protect your controller so you really need to look in the manual to find out what size fuse you need and they are really cheap and really simple to fit as well. Thanks for the good question. <clears throat> Now if you have any questions for me then do leave them in the comments section of this video and I'll do my best to answer those questions next week. Thanks for watching, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you are new here and you enjoy what I do then please do consider subscribing and I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching, ta for now.